guys, the overbuilt knife trend has kind of come and gone, but there is one company that are putting out overbuilt knives that are still truly very functional EDC knives. So let's turn this around and we're going to take a look at three knives from a company that I think are the current king of overbuilt knives, PMP. Guys, overbuilt knives were a craze and a fad for a while, but there is one company that's still doing it and they're doing it right. So we're going to take a look at what I think is the current king of the overbuilt knives. So we're going to look at these three knives, the PMP Aries, the PMP Kodiak, and the PMP Big Boy. Absolutely love all these knives. So let's go ahead and start with the craziest one first right here, the PMP Kodiak. And I got to tell you, this thing is, for as crazy and over the top it is, a great, great knife. This is one of the best built knives you're going to find. PMP has been making knives that are extremely well done at a lower price point than a lot of the other companies that are even doing it offshore. This thing is done in M390 and titanium. It's got a gorgeous frag pattern on it. But the thought and detail that went into this knife, not just to make it over the top, but make it good, make it well done. The problem with a lot of the overbuilt knives is they're just not that functional. This thing is a beast of a knife that is super thick. They've done weight reduction in here, not just for looks, but it is for weight reduction, but it is still a very functional blade. This thing comes down to a usable, usable edge. While it is a little thick, it still cuts very well. It's comfortable in hand. The milling pattern that's on this in this grenade pattern, this, this frag pattern is done incredibly well. And a lot of thought went into how do we make this comfortable, but still have this. The lockup on it is great. And a knife this big that you can reverse flick off of the thumb studs and it's still, you, there was no wrist in that. Just right off the thumb studs, and it functions great. The pocket clip functions incredibly well in and out of pocket. It's really comfortable. This thing has, I mean, while it's heavy, it has the ability to be carried every day if you want to, running on bearings. But like I said, when you look at the fine details on this, everything is done beautifully well. This gear pattern on the backspacer, nice and consistent. There's no irregularities in the milling. This has been dropped a couple times because it's heavy. And then it comes down to these unique looks and features on this, like the uh, lanyard hole. It looks like an I-beam, which makes sense because this is huge. It, it just looks construction grade, over the top, heavy duty. But I find myself drawn to it and using it more than I ever expected to. Now, is this something I would carry on a day-to-day -day basis? No, but it is something I will carry on occasion just because I know what I'm going to get as far as how people are going to look at that. And then when you look at this backspacer, how it comes down, it just completely wraps around and then comes in on that. These scales lock in on it. So just nice, clean, clean lines on this. They have got some of the best machining and design work that I've seen in the overbuilt knife category. So this was the first one. We're going to get the second one out, which is probably my favorite of the bunch. And we'll look at it next. And it's the PMP Big Boy. And it's my favorite, not because uh, of anything that it's got going. It's not like flashy or puppy. This is definitely a big overbuilt knife. I mean, you can look at it on here. It's just about nine inches. Big, beefy handles on this. But this is a knife that even though it's big, and overbuilt. It's the PMP big boy for a reason. It's had enough weight reduction that this is nice and light, super comfortable, so comfortable in hand, carries in the pocket beautifully. But when you get down to the nuts and bolts of it, you've got one of the most functional, listen to that snap, one of the most functional knives that is out there. You've got this big, broad blade that comes down to this super thin profile. It's in 14C28N that's been done in a satin that has held up really well. This cuts about as good as any knife you're going to find out there. It has lines that you would see on like a Shirogorov, but like an overweight Shirogorov. It's like somebody force fed it because they were going to make four gua. The flipper action on this is great. Some of the best jimping you're going to find. In hand, these handles are amazing. It does not, it's, it feels big and bulky and it is, it looks overbuilt, but it doesn't feel or carry like it. Action on this, just like the last one, 
stellar, stellar action. And I haven't taken this apart to clean it in a long time. It's got this really comfortable, long, bent uh, wire clip that does not pres uh, present a hot spot at all. Doesn't scratch anything because it's completely rounded and it's fully reversible. So if that's what you're looking for, this thing runs on bearings. But like I said, for such a big knife, it doesn't feel heavy. And then you have the same style of lanyard if you want a lanyard on this, which it's a big knife, so you may want a lanyard. I can't think of an overbuilt knife, like an overbuilt style of knife like this, that comes close to the all around bells and whistles and functionality of this. Beautiful blade shape, look at this. A little bit of belly up front, but a great big flat area there. You've got this nice, nice flipper tab that presents itself cleanly. It's nice and rounded. It is really one of the best ones to flip off of. It doesn't take anything. You just put your finger on it and it's going to fly open. And then access to the lock bar on this is about as good as it's going to get. They did the perfect amount of material removal here and here for it not to feel too thin and sharp, but give you really good access. And then the action on that is just brilliantly smooth. And like I said, then you get into the, this 14C28N blade takes an aggressive, aggressive edge. It holds it. And it's one of my favorite steels all around on this knife, just about perfect like this is close to getting perfect when you're looking at a large folding knife so let's move on to the next one the last one which is arguably the most beautiful one of all now while that last one was my favorite for the form and functionality of it this one i think is just the best showing of what they can do there this is an amazing amazing knife this gets a lot of pocket time s90 v blade with a beautiful almost like super fine uh, stone wash on this nice 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 edge profile on this lock you know frame lock on this it's reverse flick only with external stop pins which is an attractive look i like external stop pins not so much because of functionality wise but they are attractive it just has a different look for some reason to have external stop pins reverse flick only on this and then this blade transitions down to these sweeping handles that thin out but they don't feel like they're insecure like they're not secure a lot of times when your handle thins down like this it feels like it's slippery and wants to come out of your hand not on this knife the fact that it has a spot for you to get up on it and choke up on it without adding a choil is awesome. A lot of people don't like a full finger choil. They say it catches on material and it rips. So you can get all the way up on this and then be on the spine of that. Have that tension, you know, that, that positioning you want where you can really choke up on it and get down on the material and you're not interrupting that edge. The lockup and action on this is great. This thing just slams open and then falls shut. The backspacer on this is really unique. It's almost like, uh, it looks like it's a pry bar. I like to think of it as like a glass breaker because you can definitely smack it into something and break. Big lanyard hole on this. And then once it's open, these lines just flow into this broad blade. It, it gives it a very distinct look. This knife cuts so well and it's comfortable in the cut because of the way the handles just marry up into that grip. And then when you look at the pocket clip, the pocket clip has a double ball style in underneath and it slides in and out of pocket so incredibly well. The pocket clip is milled to match the handles so that, it, I mean, it was not an afterthought. It's not like they just threw a pocket. That's what Jim Skelton said, and I absolutely agree. This was thought out. This was intentionally part of the knife. It was designed to be a part of the full package. And then when you look at this, the machining on this is so clean and fine. They could have easily, you know, gotten rid of that, but their, their milling on this is so fine that it almost doesn't need a finish. It doesn't. It looks great. But what that also gives you, you get a tactile feel on that. It's not the slip, like if this had been stonewashed and, and like really finely stonewashed and almost polished, you would have lost the feel on this. It doesn't feel slippery. It just feels amazing in hand. So there you go. There was three knives from what I think is currently the king 
of the overbuilt knife market. So let's turn us around, do some final thoughts and send you out about your day. There you go, guys. I love all three of those knives. And I love the fact that PMP is doing such a good quality work and putting out not just knives that are gimmicky and big, but absolutely functional. The Kodiak, not as much as the other two, but this one, the most beautiful one that they've made so far, still an incredibly good everyday carry knife. Spends a lot of time in my pocket. And then that PMP big boy, absolutely just ate every day horse of a knife that spends a lot of time getting carried. Uh, so that's pretty much it on this one, guys. You know I have sponsors if you want to support the channel. I didn't put an ad in, but you can go down. You can find those sponsors, Doll Strong Knives, Temper Trail, Coffee Brand Coffee. You can find their links down below. Coffee Brand Coffee, Temper, Temper Trail have discount codes built into them. There's a discount built into the link, but you can also use great coupon code Crazy Sharp, all one word, at Coffee Brand Coffee, Temper Trail, Rosecraft Blades, not a sponsor, and Ferrum Forge Knife Works, not a sponsor. So just to provide you guys a little bit, 10% off across the board. I also have got a bunch of affiliate links down below. You can take those links. You can use them to go to most of the knife vendors that you're going to purchase from Blade HQ, Knife Ship Free, GP Knives, and then a bunch of knife companies like Artisan, Wee, Civivi, Sencut. So check those out. Supports the channel doesn't cost you anything at checkout. You know you're going to buy knives anyway. If you're going to buy stuff on Amazon, please use my Amazon store link that's down below. Take that, pin it to your browser, use it for any Amazon shopping you're going to do. And take a look at joining my memberships. Everyone gets a bunch of benefits. I've got a private Discord that everyone has access to. I do exclusive content. I do giveaways for the baseline and premium tiers. And I do, I have a sharpening tutorial series on YouTube for the premium guys. And I have built a public Discord that I would love to have you guys start hanging out on. It's down below. Join that. Hang out with everybody. It's a lot of fun. Guys, that's it on this one. I love you all. Keep it clean in the comments section. If it's your birthday, happy birthday, and I'll see you next time.